and in November 2004, a 36-year-old Army captain named Tammy Duckworth was deployed as a helicopter pilot in Iraq. During a routine mission she described as a grocery run, the Black Hawk helicopter she was piloting took a hit from a rocket-propelled grenade, the right side of the cockpit exploding into flames. Duckworth lost both legs as well as partial use of her right arm. During a difficult recovery at Walter Reed Hospital, a phone call from Illinois Senator Dick Durbin would eventually change her life, giving her a new mission. Duckworth went on to be elected to Congress in 2012 before winning an Illinois Senate seat in 2016. Last week, for the first time since she was injured in action 15 years ago, Senator Duckworth returned to Iraq on a bipartisan congressional delegation to meet with Iraqi leaders and to assess the military and political situation on the ground. Democratic Senator Tammy Duckworth joins me now from Capitol Hill. Senator, it's a great pleasure. Thank you very much. It's I, good to be on, Andrea. Well, I want to ask you about the emotions you experienced returning to Iraq. How difficult was that for you? It wasn't difficult going back. I've been waiting to go back for a long time, uh, but I will tell you when I stepped into uh, Baghdad off of the fixed wing aircraft and into a helicopter for the first time, um, it was a very much a flashback moment that the sight, the smell, the, the sound of the aircraft, the smell of the hydraulic fluid, the, you know, and, and I felt very disjointed to be sitting in the back as a senator and not in the cockpit of that aircraft as a pilot. So um, uh, it was, you know, it. It, it, it took me uh, a moment to gather myself and, and, and focus on what I was there to do. And I read that you also had moments of uh, regret that you weren't with the troops because you so enjoyed your service. I did. I, I really felt like I belonged with them. I didn't. I, I needed to be in uniform, not in my you know civilian clothes. And, and, and it, it, it's hard because. Ever since I was wounded, I, I wanted to go back to my unit. I wanted to go back to the troops. These were not my troops, uh, you know, I, other than that, the American troops, so they're all of our troops, but there's not my particular unit. But it just felt very strange to be sitting in the back and be on the outside and, and to watch these amazing men and women who are doing a really important job for us and, and not be part of that team. Um, but it's now my job to make sure that we live up to their sacrifices and we make good decisions here in Washington to support the work that they do. I know you're concerned about the Iraqi leadership and the relationship with our troops, how long we need to stay, and also ISIS and the threat that ISIS still poses despite our victories. Uh, and now Baghdadi has reappeared mm -hmm. for the first time. Uh, the CIA and other uh, organizations, intelligence community uh, organizations are not saying that they authenticated this video that has appeared, but it, they're not arguing that it does appear to be authentic. It's the first time in five years. Can ISIS regroup and still be a threat to Iraq and to us? Well, now that I've been to Iraq this past week, I would say yes. It's, Iraq is very much on the precipice. They can backslide and ISIS can very much um, regroup. In fact, they, I found out that they're still making payments. They, they have the capacity to make payments to the ISIS widows and orphans in these refugee camps. So uh, there are about 30,000 widows and uh, women and children who are ISIS uh, supporters, the, the most hardcore ISIS supporters who are sitting out there. And the Iraqi leadership has not come up with a plan on how to deal with these 30,000 uh, people, 10,000 of whom are children under the age of five. And so um, uh, right now the Iraqi leadership is saying, well, you know, we'll put them in a camp in the desert. All you're doing there is just allowing ISIS to regroup and grow the next generations of fighters who will come back and then shoot at American helicopters uh, again. And so we have to maintain engagement with Iraq and its leadership to push them to move forward with plans on how to deal with their internally displaced persons, with the refugees, to um, build a, a really stable democracy so that they can truly really fight ISIS. But ISIS and its, and its elements are still there and very much active, if underground. And the president this hour is just tweeting after an intelligence briefing at the White House just now that we have 1,800 ISIS prisoners taken hostage in our final battles to destroy 100% of the caliphate in Syria. Decisions are now being made as to what to do with these dangerous prisoners. European countries are not helping at all, even though this was very much done for their benefit. They're refusing to take back prisoners from their specific countries. Not good. It seems like a casual way to approach this issue. Very much, but this is very typical of, of the president, isn't it? He makes decisions to put troops out of Syria, for example, without talking to the ground commanders or to talking to diplomats. 
um, uh, frankly, uh, the issue of ISIS is an international issue. It's not just for Iraqis to worry about. It's not just for Americans. It's for everyone to, to worry about because the elements of ISIS, even though they don't physically con uh, control territory right now, uh, they have all of these people that, if we don't deal with them, are just going to regroup and be there waiting for the next chance uh, to reemerge. Re and we can't allow that to happen. Senator Duckworth, it's a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for all you're doing. Thanks, Thanks for being with us. On.